All right, I'm ready to get started. You ready? Yep, ready. Okie dokie. So we have 254 Nightwalker. And what would you like to do today? Oh, you're in phases? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. used to be a friend of the stream. Oh, really? Yeah, I had lots of... Uh, well, as much as you can have overlap with people in Australia, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how that is for bossing parties and such. Um, I... Most of my bossing I do through the UI, because mm -hmm. okay. um, like a lot of people in this guild are like 280, so <laughs> even if I was bossing with them, I just wouldn't get the damage I need. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's a uh, it's probably like pretty far in, in between. Even people on their secondary characters already in their 260s probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So what can I what can I do for you today? I guess. <laughs> um. So, my one of my main questions is like prioritizing meso. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I've been saving up meso. I I have forty seven bill right now. Okay, that's good. I'm not sure like when the next Star Force event is. I've been told to just like save as much as I can for that. Mm hmm. And um. But I don't have that many, uh, like, spares, so I don't even think I'd use it all. Right, yeah, there's the... Yeah, it comes down to a bunch of factors, right? If, like, if you have a bunch of money, but you have no spares, then feels like all you can really do is cube. If you have spares and you have money, then you're just sitting around waiting for an event. And if there's... Uh, what's the last option? Oh, I mean, if you have no money, then you can't really do anything. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. it's always a little bit of a of a thing where like it's like pick two things. Uh, ideally, you want to have all three. Um, so I like to look at events having a lot of time in between them, kind of as a blessing in the sense of it gives me more time to get more backups. And then as you have more backups, more options will open up, right? So let's say that you have just like one superior belt, but you can get you know anywhere from like ten to like a hundred if you want to. Uh, ping bean belts to transfer over so you can make sure that you get a, a 20 or a 21 depending on if you transfer a 22 or a 21 um, even if you have no superior belts then just the fact that there's time for you to get money and to get belts then you can still guarantee yourself a high star force belt uh, but if at the same time you know someone is like crazy lucky and gets like six or seven superior belts well now that means that they can tap right on the belt and even if it booms two or three or even four times there's you know no harm no foul and on average, it's probably going to be cheaper that way. And then you don't have to worry about transfer hammering, redoing potential, losing a star in the process, that kind of thing, right? So yeah. in that sense, time can be your friend, but it also can kind of be uh, your enemy. Uh, it comes down to, when you say prioritizing mezzo, I assume you're meaning like prioritizing where to spend your mezzo, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. How is the, because you're in that point now, you're past the 250s and some of the projects can be more expensive. Um, how's your weekly income looking now? And like, how much is that is coming from your main character versus like side characters, bossing meals, that kind of thing? So I just started trying to like make more bossing mules mm -hmm. right now. I used to main Kana when Kana was like absurd and you would just like use Kishin and just farm all day and you just make mm -hmm. like two bill an hour. Mm -hmm. But, um, I stopped playing her when Frenzy Totem, so she can she makes like 1.4 bill. This character makes 1.4 bill, and then I have like a few other characters that could do a few bosses, but nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. So like with Ursus income and like Maple Tour, I'm probably making like 10 bill with farming too a week. Mhm, mm that's pretty good income. And uh, yeah, because there's got to be that point where you start getting your bossing wheels rolling and then you get more, well, it's mostly cubes, right? There's not that much in terms of potential scrolls and flames is pretty <laughs> meager amount. So, uh, but like all of the cubes can help you, you know, kind of self fund on those bossing wheels and kind of like bring them up more organically that way. I like doing it that way because then you don't have this whole wall of, of characters that just joins your roster in one go and that you suddenly have to pile that on top of what you're already doing in terms of dailies and weeklies but you can grow it a little bit more organically one at a time and just kind of see do you have time for this okay if you have enough time uh then maybe add another one or if you get stronger on a character maybe add a boss on a character you know and then kind of keep the balance between where the time is going in in a week yeah that makes sense uh right now i'm trying to uh 
just fund uh, my Shadower and my Night Lord. Mm -hmm. They they both have um. They both have Craw, and then my Night Lord has the coins to get Abso gear. So mm -hmm. I just have to focus on like cubing that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, that could be a bit expensive. So if you're looking for stuff to do off event, and you're not really, you don't really have backups on your main, you could start looking at you know just like seventeen starring and maybe like two line legendarying some of that kind of stuff on like bossing meals to get them up and to get your weekly income up. And then by the time the event comes around, you're either at the same money or maybe a little bit more. But at, in the meantime, you have like a stronger foundation of, of bossing mules, right? That can make sure that the next time you have another upgrade event that you can make the money back even faster. Or you can get to the point where you can actually make upgrades around around the same time because the upgrades will get more expensive for your main, essentially. Yeah, yeah, that that's what I've been saving up for too. Like. Mm -hmm. I want to upgrade my main a lot, but I also can use a lot of money. Like, I don't know when the next Star Force event is, but I want to have enough to where I can, like, at least 17 star a few things on my on my boss mules. Yeah, so right now, the, the one thing that we're, you know, that's like tentatively what's coming is most likely around the end of November that we're probably going to see Shining in New Age. And then probably around that time is usually also when Cube Sale is. So those things might coincide pretty close together at end of November. That's probably why people are saying just save, but that is like two full months away. So there's definitely yeah. some investments you can probably make. You know, if you say you make, t even if you just m keep making that 10 bill a week, that's like 80 bill extra, but do you really need 125 bill then? Cause then you're going to be tapping the entire day. You're kind of probably going to make insane gains if you give all the, get all the backups. But if you invest like 20 to 30 bill now, get your bossing wheels in order, make money over those you know eight weeks uh nine weeks extra you're gonna make that money back right so it makes more sense to invest it now and have a more solid uh, amount of characters we know the sunny sunday up until uh this coming sunday and then after that uh we'll have to wait for patch so there is um r right after our session is going to be a community stream and most likely uh people are always asking like when is um when is the next 5, 10, 15? When is the next Star Force event? So that's definitely going to be something that people are asking. And most likely something we'll have an answer to by like reset today. On if there's going to be a 5, 10, 15 or over 30% off in the upcoming um, upcoming batch of um, of events. So that'll probably be until... Uh, is it going to be that long? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Oh yeah, 6 weeks. Yeah. So somewhere in the next 6. I guess that there's going to be at least one, yeah. Uh, 5, 10, 15... I think if I kept track of everything correctly. Yeah. Um, and then if not, it'll be like the next batch after that. So like two weeks after that. So, but yeah, I mean, it could be here, right? Like it could be in like November, what is it? Fourth or something, which is still, you know, that's ages away. So then as well, you might as well just get some things to 17 or if there's a 30% off, you could wait for that until t just to get everything to 15 and then just get it to 17 during that same day. Might not be like super optimal, but it, then you, at least you have it done. So that's, yeah, uh, that makes sense. yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I, uh, since I'm almost 255, I, I want to be able to at least, like, one, two shot in Lamenia. I don't know if I'm strong enough to be doing that yet. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, like, I'm trying to find small upgrades I can do in the meantime that isn't, like, an insane amount of money. Right, okay, yeah, for the main, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, boost notes all max, because that will help, yeah. Or at least, like, the important ones that are hitting, right? Yeah, that's also, like, one thing keeping me back from uh like boss mules obviously because i want to just keep dumping it into my main so i'm just getting stronger but mm -hmm. at the same time i could be making more money on the side yeah what are you doing in terms of of bossing on the main uh main i'm just up to lou will right now mm -hmm. so normal so, normal lucid will party uh hard oh you're doing hard okay yeah 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 i can contribute to um I'm doing normal will, but mm -hmm. I can contribute to lucid enough, so... Yeah. Okay. Um, you, have you done, like, a BA? Do you know that? Uh, no, I haven't done, like, a full BA. Mm -hmm. So I it's good to know. I just got my, uh, yeah. my arcane weapon. Yeah, that probably helped a lot. I, usually, yeah. like, if you were already doing... Were you doing hard will before you got the weapon? Or, uh, sorry, hard lucid before you got the weapon or after? Yeah, yeah. Before, yeah. Then you're probably... But that probably my, bumped um, you into hard will i'm guessing yeah i i haven't tried yet but my other my abso weapon was like i i rolled a couple cubes on it and mm -hmm. hit three line attack so mm -hmm. i was like oh damn but um it's still like 500k better than uh 
Yeah. And it's got like the other bonuses too, like the mm -hmm. uh, IED is like 10% more, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Abzo has to be insanely good if you <laughs> to, to avoid having you move up to Arcane. Arcane just yeah, that much better. Crazy. This attack. Um, and like just doing that, I got a I got a belt drop. I, don't, I can't even mm -hmm. do anything with that, right? Because no, so there's like, you know, you could. Um, so what I do is I like if a shining comes around, like because I have the I have the patience for it, and you'd need so many pieces to switch them to make it worth it. You have to switch out of the entire uh, superior Golic set, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. So during a shining i'll try to tap it because then it's at its cheapest and then if it goes cool then i can you know put that in the inventory for like another six months to a year and a half until i can maybe switch over <laughs> uh yeah, but if yeah. you are like limited on your budget and you're still building up your account then you yeah you just keep that on on the backlog it's probably going to be a year plus before that gets any kind of relevance but you know it's one yeah. of the it's one of the pieces <laughs> yeah i gotta uh, that's like one of my goals like i want to get into the like waiting room for boss drops i guess mm -hmm, at this mm -hmm. point like i want to start doing um like lotus and damien mm -hmm. uh hard lotus and damien but i don't know if i'm strong enough i'll have to see you're probably at that breaking point whether you can like easily solo it or whether you need other people with you that that'll be a thing but if you're doing hard lucid hard will then hard lotus and hard damien are doable but the main question is just like what party size would be like where the run is, you know, fast enough so you don't feel like you're taking forever, but also, you know, not too high so you don't have to share the loot with five other people, right? Because then it's kind of, yeah, <laughs> then you're kind of yeah, wasting yeah. your time there. They might as well just blow up normal and just get the money and get out, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing every week mm -hmm. so far. But I should probably try to get into a party and see. Yeah. How quickly we do it. Yeah, you're probably at the point where you could, if you really wanted to, you could solo it, but it'll probably take forever. <laughs> yeah. Like a pretty long run. Um, but sometimes it's good to just limit tests, just to see if you can do it, just to see if you can survive for that long, and also to see when you make upgrades, to see how much faster it actually got, and that'll be really good as well, because it's very hard to tell when you're like doing a party, hard lucid with a group of people and everyone makes some upgrades. It's really hard to tell like how much faster is it really and what am I doing here, right, in terms of upgrade. And then the other bosses are the ones that you already blow up, whether you blow them up in 50 seconds or in 40 seconds, it doesn't really feel like much of a difference. But if you go from like a 28 minute boss fight to like a 20 minute boss fight, that feels like a whole lot different, so. Yeah, yeah. Also that help you clean sense. clean up the mechanics a bit, and then prep you for the harder stuff that's to come in Tenebris, right? Have you done some, some like Gloom stuff already, and some Vihela uh, stuff, or not really? I was doing it on my Kana, but mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't doing enough damage. I was just support Kana, pretty much. Okay, okay. Because uh, it was just easy mode to get into parties. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, not on this character. Yeah, I want to. I don't. I'll have to do an actual BA because I don't know anything yep. about any bosses past Lu Will. Yeah. Yeah, they're very different. Like Gloom has uh, basically just like open phase where he like summons big old legs that you have to stand on, and then from that position he opens up the big eye, and then you can hit him for full damage. Otherwise, you're only doing ten percent essentially. So it's really burst uh, oriented. But then he has extra opens at certain HP intervals. Uh, I believe seventy. 40 and 15 i believe so then sometimes you can have like two opens back to back so he'll like close and then every single time after an open he shoots a big laser that sucks everybody in so you want to make sure that you survive that that phase but you know you have dark side so uh, for other people the danger is that you get hit by a stun ball and then it sucks you in while you're stunned and then you die to the laser but so that will, will very rarely happen to you of course then if you have double opens back to back they can have like longer burst sessions um, so a lot of gloom comes down to just kind of either you're running solo for normal or you're doing the other harder bosses, just kind of figuring out like if we full burst here, you know, how much percent do we do? Do we get a double open or do we just wait in between? Uh, and then kind of based on that, uh, it's gotten a lot easier now for gloom because uh, you have a darkness meter as well, right? That just slowly goes up and every time you get hit by something, it goes up a little bit faster. Where once you hit darkness, you get very limited vision around your character and stuff spawns around the map that basically tries to kill you. But in the past, those balls would also keep falling that give you darkness, give you seal and stun, but those are gone now during darkness. So that makes that phase 
I mean, I guess for a dark side class, it's pretty much the same. But for non dark side classes, that phase got a whole lot more forgiving. But sometimes you want to, and again, this will just come with experience. When a time like the open, either uh, like the open for the boss with the darkness, or maybe the opposite, depending on your class, right? Like as a demon avenger, you can be in revenant, and then you can get hit hit by everything. So sometimes I just want to like force the darkness by standing in the beam and then getting hit by it. And then if that does enough damage, then maybe I can force another open and then I can stay in open while not being able to get hit. And then, you know, maybe some classes have longer iframes and then, so it really comes down to per class and like with the timing of how strong you are, but there's a lot of flexibility with Gloom, but you you just need to commit that damage when he's open essentially. But when it comes to Gloom and, and Dark Knell, there's a lot of benefit to having Dark Side because there's a lot of stuff falling from the ceiling that will just mess you up. So you do have an advantage there with the with the dark side. Uh, okay. Uh, do you think, like, how how much stronger do you have to be for, to contribute to those bosses compared to like Lucid? I'm assuming it's a lot more. Uh, yeah, it's quite a bit more. You can always try to like start with the um, with normal just to get more used to the mechanics, and then you know do some pickup groups through the through the boss menu and I kind of see how that goes. But yeah, it is significantly more. Um, broadly, um, I don't know how familiar you are with all of my stuff, like with my resources and everything. Have you looked uh, through? Yeah, I've been I've been going through them recently. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the like the dailies and the, and the progression, right? You can kind of see like where the game kind of wants you to be at to be able to hit certain benchmarks in terms of bosses and, uh, and game content. Um, so I would put the, doo -doo 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 -doo, where's Gloom? <coughs> and normal Gloom is, I think, around the same point as, like, Hard, uh, Lotus. In okay. terms of, uh, damage output, so you got Hard Lotus here, and then Hard Lucid, Hard Will, Gloom, and then Dark Nell, right? So they're kind of like, that batch here is where, where you're in now, I think. If you look at levels, yeah, you're looking at 250 to 259. And then Chaos Guardian Slime is comes after that. This is just a long boss fight. Um, but you want to get the chance of those rings, right? If you're doing normal, you're basically, you know, you're just throwing a Hail Mary every week. But it's not really useful. Yeah, I've been running uh, normal slime and I just, I haven't seen a ring yet. So it's... Yeah, that's perfectly normal. Um, this stuff though, of course, if you start making a start on this and you get... You can get towards 260 before New Age. All of that stuff will get a, a whole new uh, dimension <laughs> and a whole new vision on that once Six Job comes out. And a lot of parties are probably going to start splitting up and or people are going to start soloing because they can just nuke things. Um, but it's good to have the experience first so that you can you know, then blow up the boss solo uh, way more easily and then have way more chance of the drops, right? Because it's going to take forever to get those drops. So you want to... You want to get your foot in the door as soon as possible. Um, yeah. So, like, stat-wise and progression-wise and everything, you're probably looking f more towards, um, I think, around, like, you know, like, because now you're at around, like, 25k, right? You're probably looking for more towards, yeah. like, 35 to, like, for normal and for normal Lotus and for parties and everything, you, you can start doing that. But then, you know, if you want to go for smaller parties for Lotus and to get faster runs you're gonna look all the way up to like 30 to 35k probably and if you want to go into like the chaos runs you're essentially looking for 40 40k plus all the way up to like yeah 40 yeah all the way up to 50 but like 40 and then if you're going towards 45 50 that's when people start like soloing and then that's when like people started liberation already and you know all of the a lot of the extra stat there, it seems like that stat is kind of impossible compared to where you are now, but then, you know, the sacred symbols and all that will start picking up a lot of a lot of stat. And then some stat that seems like there's no way you can even go that high will start making more and more sense, essentially. Okay, yeah, because I still have, like, all 17-star gear. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing I've been saving up for. I want to yep. at least 21-star Kra, mm -hmm. and then uh, I have to get all my arcane, so it's going to take a while to get the coins and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're doing the hard bosses. I think you can start doing hard will now or definitely start trying to do that. And then that'll, uh, we can make some, like, we can look at what we have now, how, how we can kind of min-max on that and maybe make some small upgrades here and there to get you into hard will quickly. So you can at least have two entries for, 
um, for the boxes. And then if you can get to normal Vihela as well, that should be not super far, especially if you... Do you have some healing fams? I saw you had some fams here. Uh, yeah, I have two large healing fams. Okay. The ones I put in are just... Uh, I didn't put any of the large ones, but those are mm -hmm. my uh, IED ones. I have I see, yet yeah. to get a large item drop. Uh, yeah. I hate familiars. <laughs> just, it just sucks. So bad. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's so mutual. Familiars hate you too. You know that's why. Yeah. <laughs> they hate everyone, and everyone hates them. Yeah. It's so. Uh... It, it's so horrible. I hate it so much. Yeah. If it wasn't so good, then we would all just ignore it. But yeah, it's just you can't True. really you can't really let it go. It's just that yeah. that massive. Yeah. I think um, so what was I saying? Um. Oh, yeah, so normal Vihela, I think, is because of healing and everything, it's probably the next one that you would add. Um, because normal Vihela can also already drop boxes. And then after that, it would be first Gloom, then hard Vihela, uh, or or hard Vihela maybe, and then Gloom, kind of just depending on your party and what it's doing. And then hard Dark Nell as like extra chances of arcane boxes. Because they'll speed yeah. up the process uh, tremendously, you know. Because every harder boss also has a higher drop rate for the boxes, so that will yeah make that a whole lot clearer. And then hard Lotus and hard Damien is nice, but it's mostly for like the one in a billion chance to get a pitch piece. And then what are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna like tap it all the way, or are you gonna do it halfway? Um, if you could do it quickly, then it's cool crystal value. But um, yeah, until you're you just want to look at the, the 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 time you're spending within your account, right? Like if Hard Lotus takes you like uh, 15 minutes and Hard Damien takes you 20 minutes, that's 35 minutes of your week. But you have want to have G skill, so that's probably like an hour of your week, uh, you know, or well, let's say a half an hour of your week extra. But if in the same time you can do a bossing mule, and you could blow up to regular Lotus and Damien in like two minutes, right? Uh, so in but then you make like what 400 mil less. But you could do a bossing bill in the same time that makes you like 1.2 bill. But like now you're kind of like shooting yourself in the foot. Now you're paying basically 800 mil a week for a really, really low chance of a Berserk or an eye patch. That's kind of like how you want to think about like, you know, is that worth it to me? If it is, then do it, right? And if it's not, then work on another bossing bill and get that one fired up, essentially. Yeah, because I can't do anything with pitch. To, you need like four pitch, right, before you can even do anything. Well, so there are and some then, pieces that are kind of exceptions, right? Like if you get a book, you basically immediately switch it. Um, the eye and the face, because of uh, set bonuses and everything, like, the only interference there is with the Twilight Mark, essentially, and the if you have the Slime Ring combo. But like a Berserk and, a, and an Eye Patch, if you do get them, they are like immediately to be put in. Okay. Yeah. And you get access to them earlier, quote unquote, because you know the bosses can't be soloed faster. Uh, but still, it takes people like forever to <laughs> to get them. Sometimes just like a year of running before you even see one, and some people even don't see one in a year. So, yeah, I also don't have like crazy drop gear. I think my drop is mm -hmm. like one fifty nine buffed fully. Mm -hmm. So, I, I have to work on getting that. But then like getting like four hundred drop is crazy expensive. Like for me right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and without a large drop, that's not possible even to get that high. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, drop rate is definitely something like a full set. Uh, yeah, so my a yeah. big problem for me right now is uh, I'm running two rings uh, mm -hmm. that are meso drop for bossing because I don't have enough rings. All right, you couldn't get any rings from the live from the the ring event. So I made a mistake. Uh, I, I didn't think it was a mistake. I bought the Cosmos rings for the, uh, like, for boss mules. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, oh, I should have gotten rings for my main because I don't have enough. But, I, I mean, I have, like, a kind of treasure. Like, I can make another one for, uh, specifically for mobbing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I'd still have one ring slot that's missing. Oh, you got the Treasure Hunter John's ring, right? Yeah, I could do that. An I don't NLC? Know. That's very fast. You just do one quest line to get one coin, and then you just buy it from the shop for a coin. It takes like yeah. five minutes. Because I want to keep like being able to one-shot too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'd have to test that out and see. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing, when it comes to like exactly to like how much damage you need, I mean, one thing I'll say is just test, you know, just 
see which which buffs you can put on. I don't know if you like alternate. Um, uh, well, we can go we can go through the whole thing, but like um, like looking at the different setups and see if you're like maximizing properly. Because once you get to this point, you really want to start making separate uh, setups when it comes to mobbing and bossing, right? But pretty much completely different setups when it comes to Legion, Link skills, hyper stats, familiar sometimes, equips that you wear, right? To make sure that when you're mobbing, you're just 100% prioritizing damage to normal monsters and just nuking them out of orbit. And then once you have that in place, then caking on as much drop rate and mezzo as you can relevant to the situation that you're in. And when it comes to bossing, you're just getting your ID right, you're getting your critical rate, critical damage right, your boss damage, and you're just doing as much damage to bosses as you possibly can with, with those setups. But once yeah, you get up I... to this point, sometimes you just kind of like click here, click there, and then you kind of make like a... Well, you make a bit of a mess, essentially, but, but that's normal. So we'll, we'll probably have to like clean up a little bit and make sure that we have everything, um, you know, like 100% that you like understand the mechanics behind everything 100% and that you have the the right goal in mind in terms of where do I get my damage from and then once that's okay then we can start building out like and then where do we get that from in terms of your gear and everything yeah cuz i have a i have specific like legion and uh like skills for mobbing and bossing but mm -hmm. i don't know if they're like maximized perfectly Okay. Because I, I want to have, like, my bats one-shotting, because when bats one-shot, it's, like, just crazy, like... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, we can... Uh, yeah, so uh, most of the time people ask about, like, you know, like, where do I spend my money and what do I do with my equips? And most of the time I find it's probably best to just go through everything first and make sure that all of the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed and make sure that any kind of small questions you have uh, on other topics all get answered. And then the equips and what to do with that kind of flows more organically because then you know exactly where you're looking for damage. I find that that usually, you know, kind of is easier to do that way. Okay. Because yeah. like, I'm gonna, I can say like, oh, you have to switch this equip and it'd be like, oh, but where am I getting your crit rate from? And then I have to look at your link skills and then I have to look at your legion. But if I look at that first, I'll have it in my head and then we can make that link uh, immediately, essentially. But that's why it's good to look at yeah, like your overall account in terms of your Legion and like your bossing mules. Um, and then, yeah, that can inform all the other the other progress. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you bought your weapon recently, right? Yeah, I just bought it. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's a good move. Yeah, all right. Um, and I, uh, I, I got it to 16 star, and mm -hmm. I, I, I had a legendary... Um, I had the legendary scroll from right. the six star event, so I just mm -hmm. popped it on there. Yep. Yeah, and as far as like beginner potential, this is solid, so nothing too crazy that you need to do about that. Uh, Come... one thing I was wondering, mm -hmm. the my emblem and my uh, secondary mm -hmm. would getting uh, two line attack be way more like I. It's probably hard to tell, but yes, short I answer, like... yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that'll probably be what we'll what we'll get to in terms of because cubing sales are like six months apart, and even then the sale isn't like insane. I would say cubing sales are mostly for people who are who have like a new character that they want to fund, and it's around that time anyway, so you want to hold off a little bit. Um, and it's for people who want to basically like double prime end game stuff, you know, that's already twenty two start. For those people, yeah. like cubing sales are really good. For everyone else, a cube sale is just like. A little bit of an extra excuse to just spend a little bit earlier but cubing you mostly want to be just doing off event and just in between in between waiting for star force events when there's more time in between then you want to wait essentially okay um, okay so i look at your back is that one superior earring backup and one belt so uh, yeah but i for reinforce are you able to transfer onto superior yep so that's why i've been holding on to those i don't know if it's the best idea but i've been mm -hmm. holding them just in case because i had the space for it yeah, for sure. But. So the, the the strategy kind of is, um, so uh, like the first example I gave, right? So either the reinforced uh, belt or the ping bean belt, whichever one you want to do, uh, transfer hammers into the high superior, but then it overrides the uh, potential. So basically it's okay to have like decent potential before, but you don't want to min max on your potential. Uh, if you do luck into good potential, of course you keep it. Um, and then depending on how long it takes until you get to the next step or you can afford like the, the next step is basically getting the fodder stuff the 140 stuff to 21 and then transferring hammer it into the superior at, at 20 and then okay. if you have at least one backup then you can try for 21 and if that you know 
booms, then you can do another fodder to 21 and just stand at 20. Or if it does go, then invest in 21. That's usually what I what I advise. But if, let's say, but the next time the event comes, you have like four earrings and five belts, you could also say like, I'm just going to try on my existing pieces. Because if they go or they boom once or twice, then you save the money of having to downgrade. And then if you get to 20 or 21, that'll be on average cheaper than having to transfer hammers. But this is good because you basically have a contingency and you give yourself more options when the next event happens that based on your funds and your backups, you can make a better decision. Yeah. So and same thing I with Dominators uh, and uh, and kind of Treasures, right? That's the same situation, essentially. Those are all like the backups for your superior, essentially. Yeah. And then I, I just got my reinforced ring. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I guess I'll just be saving for uh do you do you get the um the reinforced pendant now or is it is No, it you just having the dominator? Uh yeah, dominator or uh transpose sweetwater or uh dawn like daybreak pendant that can start coming from Fihela or yeah, or source of suffering from hard Fihela. like that's that's like the future for the pendants or the options essentially. The reinforce is just, you really don't get that one because you don't get much out of it. Plus, every single thing you buy with coins that um, pushes further down the road, how quickly you can get sup superior backups and realistically get to high star for superiors. Yeah. And that wouldn't that wouldn't be a big deal if, if um, pitched were more available, but they're not. So that is a big deal, essentially. If pitched drop rate was like 10 times as high, then yeah, fuck superior right maybe get a tepa to 19 and hold that and then just because pitch will be coming anyway then basically we'd be looking more at superior like we're looking at abzo because arcane is so close and so available right yeah you'd have more of that kind of yo but now you're looking at superior more like you're looking at arcane because eternal comes after that and eternal is like pitched essentially so it's you're looking like one step further yeah um Okay, so I have an idea on your backup, so yeah, not too much yet on Will, because you're doing normal, but once you do hard, of course, that speeds up the process there quite a bit. And then double the chances for boxes, that's what we want to see. Um, yeah, you were talking about your matrix and slamming everything here. I guess you're running out of stuff to really level up, which is kind of a good thing. It's really only uh, Last Resort and the Goddess Blessing that will really help you get a lot of extra burst damage, right? Other than that, it's really just like very small uh, extras. Yeah, like I just want to max out my servant. It's like two levels away. Yeah, and that then, one's close. Um, yeah, and then the uh, yeah blessing and last resort is what I've been putting most of everything into. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm yeah, one thing I do notice you uh, you don't have a saved copy of. Um... By the way, make sure you lock all the ones you have in here so you don't accidentally uh, extract when you're when you're switching out. Oh, this yeah, is yeah. like a small thing. And an extra thing, I would start saving up uh, Heroes, uh, sorry, Urda's Will, if you see that one. It's basically okay. an extra an extra cleanse. And I don't know if you have your regular Cygnus's Will skill, if you have that on a key or something. Once you're starting to go into Tenebris and you go further, these are like CC immunity slash CC cleansing skills with very high cooldown, but they can be used in like pinch moments when otherwise you're going to get screwed by some kind of mechanics going on and if you press them at the right time either to prevent hard cc or you use them to cleanse when it's available like for example if you're doing hard will and you get sealed by the webs and you're in the corner and taking damage and you can't move if you slam one of those you can heal right after and jump out um that might be enough to like especially in the boss fights where you only have five lives which is like all of tenebris <laughs> um that can make the difference between getting, you know, stuck between a rock and a hard place or actually getting out and, and surviving the run. And the, okay. the cooldown of that skill is very high, so as you start leveling it, you'll be able to use it quite a bit more. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't yep. had to use those. I, I haven't felt the need to use those in mm -hmm. any of the bosses are running yet, but... Yeah, there's only like some niche situations, like like in the past, like if you fuck up the timer on CPAP or something, if you press it at the right time, you don't get that seal or that stun, for example. So you can just ignore that. There's some there's some uses for it, but it's it's very limited, yeah. And a lot of times you could just <laughs> you just work around it, so it's not that big of a deal. But in uh, in C10 and then especially once you start going for Black Mage, it's very very useful there because of the curse mechanic. So you can like immune taking curses because if you take both color curses from different mechanics in that boss fight, you just lose a life without actually dying. And then you can just drop lives constantly without actually, you know, 
up to that point, you're like used to when you die, you're just floating around and you're immune to all damage. But essentially what happens in that boss fight is if you're just jumping around, you just lose life, lose life, lose life without act physically dying. So you can just <laughs> run out of like 12 lives in 10 seconds if you, yeah, if you, if you do that, so... Yeah. There, that skill will become very, very useful. So having it leveled up a bit, but I would level all those things up passively, of course. Uh, it's really just like, yeah, those three skills that we mentioned, and um, it will really come down to once you're moving more from like doing party stuff to soloing that you really need to max those. I think you're probably now at a good point where you can start giving a little bit more to like the boost nodes of your bossing mules just to get those fired up a little bit more. And okay. then get get them up to like um, like CPAP and a catchy, because that's usually good money. I wouldn't go like go straight up to Lotus and Damon just yet, because usually it takes a little bit too long. And okay. yeah, I usually advise like get like more like five or so characters up to do, be able to do like uh, CPAP and a catchy, and just start making in that money, and then using that money to fund uh, getting one character at a time to like Lotus and Damien, and then the Lotus and Damien can. Um, can like speed up but the, the few tips i usually give is try to get full reinforced gollux because it's a lot cheaper than superior it's not that much worse and it's way faster to get um try to get to 15 percent id familiars because for most classes that early on that's a huge difference and also it's very cheap very easy to get especially if you have familiars on your main right um and the other thing is try to see if you can get into some kind of bossing mule guild where you can get at least like one, preferably two maxed out skills, which is pretty pretty easy to get. And just do like a little bit of culvert, a little bit of flag to maintain that, because that's a lot of baseline funding that will increase your damage tremendously and will reduce the amount of funding you have to put in your character. Because right now you probably feel like, oh, the character's gotta have like six, 800 nodes in it, but you can probably get up to like Lotus and Damien Mule with like 200, 200-ish, maybe 250 nodes. You can probably already kill it in a decent amount of time. Like up to Lotus and Damien, probably like 300, 350. You can already do like a lot of damage there. Okay. Yeah, uh, when we got the 1200 nodes, I mm -hmm. put like, I put a lot of them into this character, but I yep. put 200 nodes into my Shadower and my Night Lord, mm -hmm. 200 mm -hmm. each. So, and then the rest I just put into this character. But yeah, the the sixth chapter for in Maple Sea was released. And if you get the same thing, that's another thousand nodes. So. That gives you another oh, okay. another bunch to play around with. Yeah. But yeah, so so what I usually advise is just to do the bosses on the character, you know, make sure that you're kind of like getting a good feel that you're playing the character the right way. And then kind of see like, okay, which bosses can I do? How long does that take? Is that as fast as I want it to be? Is that okay? Then don't fund it anymore, right? It'll organically get stronger with levels. Maybe if you do some weekly, uh, you know, I guess that's a, the, the fourth thing is like do um, simple weeklies because like time... Consumption wise, it's almost no time spent, but like a lot of free stat essentially over the long term, right? Um, but yeah, some characters just need more funding early on, and then other characters will just, you know, be golden and they could just blow everything up, and that's fine. And I'm not saying that you're doing this, but like make sure that you don't think like, oh, every character has to have 400 nodes and has to have, you know, 20 bill and has to have this much because some characters will just get lucky and some characters are more built for it than others. Okay. Seeing two broken trinodes here. What do you mean? You only need two trinodes for. Uh... Are you saying it's not the same skills? No, no, it is. Uh... It's just triple sixty. Yeah, I don't know what Barry. Yeah. Because Did... um, I don't use uh, Spark to farm, so I yeah. Just... Yeah. Yeah, I heard from a lot of people they don't really use Spark at all anymore, especially with. Further you get, you just shadow bite, and then <laughs> quintuple yeah. can cover everything. Well, I don't know if it's very blind, but sometimes it's really hard to see on boost notes what's exactly going on there, <laughs> especially when it's all got bats on it and it's all purple. Yeah, <laughs> it's like all the same skill. <laughs> yeah, you look at an ice lightning, and it's all just that same light blue, and it's like okay. <laughs> and then you have the Urda stuff, and it's all the same light blue as well. It's just <laughs> sometimes really hard to see. That skill window made sense. Yeah, this is usually better to look at because you could just see the numbers and see if it's split or not. Uh, okay, Matrix. Um, yeah, a few Matrix, that's all the same. Uh, Lynx and Legion. Did you have any question there on like splitting it up? The top one is mobbing? No, yes? Oh, uh, no, I didn't. Um, I only showed one preset. I, I forgot to put the other preset in, but... Uh... Mm -hmm. Oh, this one is a little bit mixed, right? 
Yeah, so we can optimize this a bit because you see Fury Unleashed and Elven Blessing together, something's off, right? Because Fury Unleashed is only bossing and Elven Blessing is EXP, so that's only mobbing. So yeah. these you don't want to have in the same setup. Uh, let me see what one that is. This is probably your mobbing one, I'm guessing, because yeah, it's also got Nature's Friend. Mobbing, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're gonna, we want to take Fury Unleashed out of there and, uh, and, and Empiric Knowledge as well, because that's also... Purely a bossing one, right? Because you want you're only gonna do extra damage on things that are already debuffed, which means you've already must have hit them, which means you're not one shotting. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So something that does hit on the first hit but then doesn't hit on the second hit, like the Ho Young Link, that's something we want in there. Because if that gives you enough bonus damage to be able to one shot, then that's like twelve percent twelve, fourteen, whatever. That's like a big chunk of extra damage, but only on the first hit. So that's that's for one shotters. Uh, and light wash as well. That's IED. We don't need that for mobbing, right? Bosses don't have enough PDR for IED to make a difference. Uh, Rin's blessing as well is only IED, so we also get that one out of there. Uh, innate gift is some flat damage. Okay, what does that give us? Yeah, Four put, spots. I put the ones that give um, like flat damage in just. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. So usually, so I have exclamation mark links that has all the link skills and all the legion buffs of all the characters in the game. So if you want to make a setup for mobbing uh, or for bossing, basically just start on the top left, essentially. So for link skills, we're looking at the clear, uh, clear boxes. So like, do we need more crit rate? Okay, then we look at the first column, right? Like how much gets you to 100%? Are you at 100%? Are you over 100% right now? If you would select that. Your phantom is um. probably... Rank two, I'm guessing, right? Right now, with everything like Legion wise, oh, I think I got my my Phantoms three, so. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah, with everything Legion, oh, yeah, see, yeah. I'm like just hitting a hundred percent. Mm-hmm. I really want to get my inner ability to twenty percent crit, like to free up, so I can like have crit damage on my Legion board or something. But I have twenty percent uh, Meso obtain and fifteen. Mm -hmm. items so i don't really want to switch that no and you don't want to just yet no yeah. your your total income of your account is still a bit too reliant on your gains from from farming and training on your main so right now that would cut into it too much plus i don't think you have enough honor to make that leap because essentially what you want to do is you want to circulate uh to get a good unique line first so either 20 crit or you know whatever your character needs so we can check that as well x mark i a Stream elements is so slow with responding these days. Uh, oh, best inside guy. Boom, boom, boom. What do I have here? Mm, these. Nightwalker. 20 boss, 20 crit, 21 attack. Yeah, so the 20 crit is the most important there. So you want to circulate to hit a 20 crit. So that's going to be a lot of money. Um, if you don't hit that crit with your circulators, then, you know, no harm, no foul, I guess. So usually. Usually what I say is like, um, if you're gonna do that, you just wait until there's a 50% off inner ability reroll, then you smell, uh, you just spam circulators. You don't smell them, you spam them. Um, but set a budget for that. You know, don't just say, I'm gonna just keep rolling until I hit, because then you can possibly roll to zero and not get anything. So you say like, I'm gonna spend two bill, five bill, whatever, like set, set a budget. Uh, if you hit, then you need to lock it and reroll, right? Because until you reroll your top skill, essentially you downgrade from what you have before that. Um, so, and most of the time I tell people that to try to aim for having like at least around a mil to a mil and a half honor before you make that move. Before that, I think the risk is too great that you end up just with nothing or with just what you got from the circulator. And then it'll be a downgrade in your inner ability. So it won't feel good. Oh, okay. So until you're that high, I would just keep the current inner ability and just kind of just like, don't touch it. Um, which means that you'll have to overcompensate on crit a little bit from other sources, but that's, that's okay. That's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, I can get there. It's just uh, like I have to sacrifice like crit damage, but yeah, we'll look into that because it's probably better if, uh, if you look at your setup, you know, you get your stats. It's probably better for you to sacrifice boss damage than crit damage. I probably want to move those over. Okay. Because um, it comes down to like additive and multiplicative. We'll get into the details. Um, Okay, so for the mobbing links, what do you have? What do you have at this point on the thing? So we have elementalism, 
Elven Blessing. We want to have the Evan skill on there, right? I have, yeah, I have that. Longer duration from the, the runes. Um, the Aaron skill, too. Yeah, oh yeah, wait, I was, we were looking through this one. Yeah, so we have enough crit to hit 100, right? Not too much. Uh, whether you use the Beast Tamer or use the stacked Archer uh, is whatever. I mean, one gives you more monster collection. The other one gives you boss damage, which is empty. But, I mean, if you're not really doing monster collection, because who needs that these days anyway? Uh, then that's kind of uh, equal. Then you have the critical damage one. You have the Kinesis. Do you have that one? I don't have a Kinesis. Okay. No. Put that on the list, because critical damage is nice, and both for mobbing and for bossing is a, is a nice link to have. So maybe put that one on the list to, to make somewhere in the in the future. Maybe the next uh, Burninator you get from, uh, from the login or something. Yeah, that's what I've been using. I've just been using uh, all those to get... Um, I want to get 8k legion at some point too but I don't yep. want to like go crazy grinding. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so just uh like whenever I get one I'll just throw it on a character I haven't made yet and just mm -hmm. 150 it. yep yeah because even at 120 uh because it, it's just level 2 link but even at 120 you get the extra four percent it's quite nice really. um and then damage to all monsters the, these you can use for both mobbing and bossing but the Kali one is is very low percentage so it's here for completion sake but I I probably would kind of skip this one because it's just such a low amount. <laughs> um, I think the yeah. Kali link is mostly used for like when you're doing a boss. Um, there's like three stages when you're doing a boss. In the beginning, you want as much survivability as possible because you want to be able to give yourself opportunity to engage with the mechanics, see what kills you, see what doesn't kill you, but be in the fight longer, right? To see all the stages, etc. Then once you get stronger at the boss fight, you get better, you understand the boss, you want to get as much damage as possible because you just want to blow it up. And then when you're at the stage where no matter what you do, if you you know close your eyes and just like roll your face on your keyboard, the boss dies anyway, then you want to have survivability again because you don't want to have like weird situations where you die for no reason. Except that last stage has shifted a little bit because now you don't have to buy buff freezers anymore. That stage is kind of, kind of gone, but there's like a... One survivability, one most mostly damage, one survivability again, kind of kind of thing, right? Uh, so Kali will do does like a little bit of both, but as you know, things that do a little bit of both, they usually get outclassed by things that do a lot of both or do one thing really well. So that's why the Kali link is a little bit forgotten. Mobbing damage. So I would grab all of these: Hoyong, Ilium, and Lara. Especially if you're moving around a lot, the Ilium will will help out. Um, what class are you? Get? Oh, you're not moving that much though, right? On the Nightwalker. Well, uh, I mean, not really. I, yeah. I don't just, um, I don't AFK because still it's like a 20% loss in kills or something. Because mm. I don't have the, I only have a 2% hat or uh, a minus two second two hat. Two second hat, so. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I want to eventually get like a mobbing hat that just has um, like minus four or minus three. At the minus least, three, but, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so you can use the Ilium for now, but then eventually the goal would be to get rid of that one, right? So that's like one, two, you don't have a Kinesis, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So four slots left at this point. Uh, and they have the Mercedes, so three, Evan, two. Uh, you could put the Aaron in there, but you probably want some other stuff. Um... Although, well, the the other, you put the Aaron in or you put some damage in at that point, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Some, and by damage, I mean like stat and weapon attack at this point. So it's mostly this first batch where you want to get all your damage from. So I guess ideally you get the Evan and you get the Kinesis in there and then you have your, your mobbing set. Okay. And for bossing, you basically start with the same priorities with crit rate and crit damage. Damage to all monsters, again, Kali, you know, whether you want it or not. Um, you skip the damage from mobbing, skip the EXP, and then you basically get to this point. ID, uh, the immunity if you need it, right? The, um, God, I'm, I've been, <laughs> my brain has been missing names so hard. Spirit of Freedom, there you go. Spirit of Freedom uh, for the extra immunity. And then mostly the extra IED, right? So the, the, arch, uh, the mage ones yeah, that you had in there, the Luminous. Yeah, Luminous. Mm -hmm. uh, the zero is probably not necessary because it's only goes up to 10%. So it usually, and the Hoyoung as well. So they're usually not worth their slot anymore around this point because it's just not enough. 
um, because of how IED works, right? Are you familiar with how IED works? Um, not really. Mm -hmm. Like not how how it stacks now. Okay, so the percentage, the sh the short version uh, is basically whatever percentage source you add gives you that percentage of how much you're missing to reach a hundred percent. Okay. So you have 80, you add 10%. How much are you at? Uh, oh, 80, add 10%. Mm -hmm. So it's, so you're missing 20. Mm -hmm. uh, 85. Mm. Or 10%. Not doing that. No, 10% of 20. Two. Yes. So you go to 82. I Took math class. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Don't worry. It's a, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> Pop quiz instant. Yeah. So then you go to 82, right? And then the next one, instead of giving you two, gives you like 1.8 because that's how much you're missing. And then you're at 83.8. And then the next one, instead of giving you 18, gives you uh, 16.2, uh, 1.62, right? So there's like diminishing returns there. Um, but the reason that we still stack it is because the bosses have PDR that goes over 100%. So if their armor was only 100%, then whatever ID you have is how much uh, damage reduction you're ignoring. So if a boss of 100% armor and you have no ID, then you have 100% final damage loss, so you hit just once. Okay. But if a boss has 100% armor and you have, say, 90% functional ID on your hits, then 90% of that armor is ignored, so only 10% is left, so you get 10% final damage reduction. So it's always trying to find the balance between how much ID do we stack and how much does the ID make our damage go up versus having an attack line there instead or a boss damage line there instead. How much does that make your damage go up? And then for attack, those things are additive with the existing sources. But for attack, there's very few lines. So attack usually is very competitive because it also gives you damage in both mobbing and bossing, right? So it's more versatile. And then boss damage is a huge percentage, but because there's so much more of it and it's additive, you need a lot more for it to increase your damage more. And it only does it when bossing and not when mobbing. So therefore, you need like a balance between these three stats when it comes to your weapon, your secondary and your emblem to make sure that you can still mob well. And then some people make, you know, sec uh, extra secondary, right? Like a mobbing and a bossing one or something like that. Um, but that's more if you hit like, you know, if you hit like boss, boss, IED on a secondary or something, that can be really good, but then it does nothing for you when mobbing. And if it makes it so that, you know, you can't kill monsters anymore, then, you know, maybe you make a secondary on the side. Okay. Uh, but yeah, bosses go, if you're going up to all the Saren and Kalos right now, at 380% defense. So, or 380% PDR. So if you ignore 90% of someone with 100% armor, only 10% final damage reduction, that's pretty good, right? So that's like CRA, those kind of bosses, like up to... I think H Mag is around that mark as well, um, but already like Helux is like 250, Lotus and Damien is 300, and then everything is 300. So if you if you ignore 90%, if you still have 90%, and they have 300 armor. Well, now there's 30% defense left, right? So now there's 30% damage reduction, which is quite significant. So that's why when you look at the progression grid, you see these numbers go up here. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, you see the numbers go in here for your functional IED because there's just more sources of IED and relative to getting boss or attack and relative to the amount of sources and access to ID you have, you do want to go higher and higher. Uh, not too high, right? You never want to go towards 100% because if you take like a visual representation, it'd be essentially like you're standing on one side, the boss is standing on the other side. The distance between you is the PDR, is the armor essentially. And the IED is every source of IED is you stepping closer at the percentage of the distance that's left between you. So if you're only always doing a percentage of what's left, you can never get to 100, right? You can only yeah. get to 100% if one of the sources is 100%. And if one source is 100%, then everything else is useless. So it always comes down to, yeah, because they fucked up with familiars in the beginning. I don't know if you know, <laughs> slight little tangent, but in the beginning, they made it so that the all of the percentage IED from a familiars added up together and then was used as one source. So some people got lucky and got like 110% total IED which meant that they had true damage in just familiars and everything else they could reroll. And that was a, a little bit oh, of an wow. oversight on their side. <laughs> yeah, I did not know about that. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, I knew a guy had one familiar with like 40 and 30 IED on it, so he was just dealing true damage for like, I think for a few weeks until they fixed that. That was interesting. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so that's why the, the ID here goes up, but it does mention functional IED here, right? So I make a big distinction between visual and functional IED. Do you, do you, do you feel like you understand the difference there or? Um, not really, no. So visual is essentially just what you see in your stat window. So the game, if you hover over the IED, right? You see a bunch of sources of IED there and you see how they come to that percentage. Now that is the percentage ID that will be set, like every attack that you send will have at least those sources of IED. But some skills have individual bonuses for IED, right? Some things that you hit, like bosses will have debuffs for ID on them, but your stat window doesn't know what skill you're gonna be using and it doesn't know what you're gonna be hitting. So it cannot account for these percentages. So if let's say that like 90% of your damage comes from a skill that has built in 30% IED, you can kind of add that 30% IED as an extra source to your existing IED because it's going to be applying most of the time, right? Then that yeah. means that when it comes to rolling for your IED and selecting IED in your link skills and in your Legion grid and in your hyper stats, you don't need to go as high as some other people. So a good example for this is Kana, for example, has no IED like anywhere. It's only in like boost nodes for individual skills, but everyone has that. So you can't really count that, right? So for their, their visual and their functional is essentially the same. So for your con, it'll be the same. Um, but some classes have way more. And Nightwalker has a really big passive, right? Where you build the stacks, the debuffs on the bosses. And remember, IED is against PDR. And normal monsters don't really have PDR. That's just bosses. So you're going to be debuffing bosses. And you're going to be building those stacks. Um, and you're going to be applying a debuff stack, of, a chunk of up to 35%. So you, you can count an extra 35% clump of IED on top of what you see visually as your functional IED. And I think that's the only one you have, but that's that's a really big extra clump. So where some people okay. might have to rely on more lines of IED on their WSE until they, f they fill out their Legion, until they get superior Golux, you can actually start rolling into boss and attack sooner, uh, which you kind of need because you want your bats to be dealing damage, right? If you get an extra attack line. But you won't be punished for that as much in bossing because you have that backup IED. And uh, this is, I think, for for your hyper set, this is your mobbing setup, right? Yeah, so I'm at 93 mm -hmm. uh, with, like, with everything. Mm -hmm. Is like what showed my stats. Yeah, so if the stats show 93, what are you actually at? Um, 93 plus the 35. Mm -hmm. I can't do that math, man. Come on, man. Zero point, zero point seven times 35 is two one and three five is two four five, two point four five percent, ninety five point four five. And if you look here, you want to go towards 96 ish, right? So you're good. You're future proof, right? If you don't add any IED anywhere, and you don't lose any any ID anywhere, you're like golden for like the next fifteen levels essentially. Okay. Yep. So but so remember if you do lose some somewhere, you want to compensate probably a little bit somewhere. Yeah. And now the other thing is when it comes to critical damage and boss damage. Um we can yeah, we can go like full nerd uh out on that as well, but Basically, it comes down to like the piles of the stat. So if you hover over critical damage, you'll see there it says that your base multiplier is 20 to 50%, right? Mm -hmm. So I usually just take half of that, so 35. So 35 on, on average. And then you add your critical damage stat to that. And that will be your total critical damage. And that's basically a final damage multiplier, like a percentage damage multiplier on everything that's a crit. So. If you would hit 100 damage and you have visually like 35%, then you add the 35 and a 35, it's just 70. So you hit like 170 on average. So that's 70% final damage. But because it's an additive multiplier, once you start going over 100 and you go over 200% and everything, there are diminishing returns eventually. This doesn't come into play for you, but if you're maining an archer, uh, do you know Vicious Shot, that skill? Have you ever heard of that? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, well, I, I've probably seen it, but 
Yeah, basically it temporarily lets you go over 100% crit rate and it takes a percentage of your crit rate and adds it to critical damage. So for end game archer burst, they have like 300% critical damage or something. And then you get so high that you start getting diminishing returns and maybe even double line crit damage on your glove might not even be best in slot for you anymore. So that's something that you want to eventually kind of like think about. But unless you see visually like way over 100, even up to like 120 or something, it's almost like if you can get crit damage, Instead of anything, you probably get the crit damage. Probably. Uh, usually okay. for hyper stats past 10, it's like always critical damage first and then the other ones. Even though for boss damage you get 4% and for critical damage only 1, you basically want to be looking at the 4 to 1 ratio, right? So now if you look at damage, you have a baseline of 100% damage, which you don't see in your stat window, but you have to know that you have that. Because you have to realize if you would have 0% damage, you would hit 0 damage. That's how the calculation works. So 100% damage is like normal damage. If you don't add anything, if it's at zero, zero everywhere, you'd have 100% damage, quote unquote. So then your damage percent, your functional damage percent, again, so your visual and maybe an extra when you're bossing, right? So you have to kind of know which skills can give these stats. Uh, is it 100% uptime? And your bossing damage, those stats are thrown together with that 100%. And then that total is like your total damage multiplier when you're bossing. Okay. With me with me so far? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's say that your total damage plus boss damage plus the base of a hundred is around four hundred percent and your base critical damage and your and your added critical damage is around a hundred percent. Now you're at that four to one ratio and basically putting one point in hyper stats past level ten in either one is around the same. But okay. if you're looking at your Legion grid, it's not that four to one, it's a two to one, right? So now, comparative to your hyperstats, in your Legion grid, critical damage is actually twice as valuable as in your hyperstats. So when it comes to your... Uh, when it comes to your link skills, kind of, but also when it comes to your hyperstats, you're more likely to kind of be somewhat in favor of boss damage. When it comes to your Legion grid, you're always going to be more in favor of your critical damage compared to your boss damage, because it's twice as valuable as in your hyperstats. So when, oh, it comes okay. to, so when it comes to puzzling your hyperstats, it's almost always prioritizing your critical damage, unless you're a character with like insane base critical damage, essentially. Okay. So I should be changing my grid pro to crit damage and then just put the remaining blocks into boss damage? Yeah, so the general priority I would always say, so if you're mobbing, it's get enough crit to hit 100%, then um, it's usually kind of a mix and match between normal damage and critical damage. Normal damage here is more valuable, again, because there aren't as many sources of normal damage as there are of boss damage, right? So for normal damage and crit damage, it's much more similar than in the, um, than in the, like in the hyperstats. But for boss damage, it's, it, it's more out. So usually critical rate and then between critical damage and normal damage until you can kill. And then once you can kill, you can go into bonus EXP. So if you see my setup, it'll... Eventually, you know, if you have a huge ass legion, it'll look something like this. So enough okay. critical rate, moving over here, between those two, and then into bonus if you have. And then if you have leftover, you know, you kinda like fill whatever, you know, damage stat you have in the middle. But that's, this is probably just all fluff, all unnecessary, because you're probably yeah. like this gives way more, right? When it comes to bossing, so again, critical rate, yeah, this looks a little bit weird because I have the Legion piece, but basically it's best to just make that straight line like you did. Uh, that's all fine setup. And then critical uh, but for bossing, it'll be enough critical rate to get to 100%, but then enough ID to hit that functional ID, right? Then crit damage, and then boss damage. That's okay. that's usually the setup. Some classes might have, like, no damage percent, and they might have, like, 120 crit damage, and then, you know, then it's knowing the background, what I just told you about the numbers and, like, how it adds up, you will have the own insight now to start tell, like, oh, it, if it's roughly the same, just fucking put it wherever, right? It's not rocket science. It's not, like, you know, you're not going to lose like 10% final damage by putting a piece in another place. But you'll probably, it probably will not be that close early on. Um, and then once you have a really big legion, then you just fill it all anyway. So then, you know, who cares? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and the order doesn't matter. But so usually like a cross, like boom, boom, like a, what is it, like an ampersand kind of kind of vibe? Yeah, that, that's like the general priority. So I, I think you'll see your damage go up quite a bit. Um, and you need a little bit of cleanup anyway, right? You got some bloat an attack here you got an extra lovely kana piece which is just a dream to fill into your yeah, legion yeah. grid uh and then at the bottom left there's a little bit of uh spillover as well uh are you familiar with the legion solver 
Oh, uh, no. Oh, man, because I can already tell you hate this, uh, and this is going to blow your mind, okay? I you, do hate it. Yeah, you just put in how many pieces you have, like this. And then you put in, like, a uh, region... Uh, I put it in dark mode as well, because you're younger than me, so you probably do things in dark mode, right? Um, yep. Region click, so I will say, like, okay, we want these two filled... Uh, we want, I don't know, maybe like a little bit of crit or something. We want them connected. And then, so in the bottom here, you can see, I c you could look at how many characters do you have. Uh, you have, uh, how many characters can you put in? Uh, I have 30, yeah. 30, yeah, okay. So it's right there, I just didn't say 30. Um... Specific, uh, number of character seven. Okay, so I could just like, keep adding characters until we, we have probably a few, quite a few two hundreds. I'm guessing. Do do do. Uh, right, and then you still have some one forties, right? Yeah. Uh, not these. That's way too low. Boom boom, boom boom. Oh, dun dun. Uh, dun. There you go. Thirty characters. Um, you just make this match with which characters you have. And then it'll say places to be filled and spaces, uh, board spaces filled. So with these, you have 116, so I can do 14 more. So I can do 14. Boom. Uh, I don't know. The shape could be restrictive, so maybe you move this around. Uh, and then you basically just click start. Boom. And you just drag them in. You're done. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, this that's is... way easier. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you'll probably love this. Um, if you want to do multi setup, uh, you can technically do like um, where's the reset? Reset. Um, yeah, like let's say you want to use this setup for other things as well. Um, you could technically just like region click this off, and then do this start, and then take these pieces out and see with the leftover pieces if you can do just the square or just do like just a square here and just do a start and then take those pieces out. You can play around with it a little bit, but of course it's not built for like every single contingency, so you might have to, you know, uh, might have to play around with it a little bit. But this will make, yeah, solving your Legion a whole lot better and get rid of this how annoying that <laughs> kind of piece is, because I know yeah. it's a, it's just an absolute nightmare to fit in. Because you throw it somewhere in the middle, but then it's so hard to get everything around it, and then you're left with it last, and then, yeah, it sticks out like a, yeah, yeah like that. Um... Yeah, I think I think and you'll I see your damage go up quite a bit. Oops. Yeah, go for it. Go I for also it. have like a few characters that like I can easily get to 140, so I can get like like three or four more blocks just from that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you'll probably also and to like min max on that point as well. You probably get to the point where not quite, but you're gonna get to the point where you have more characters that would be around the same point uh, to put in the board. And it's going to be harder to like prioritize. So I would say the top priority is the uh, is the member bonus, right? So always prioritize that. Um, then, because uh, the grid bonus is just where you put it. So it's always like the member bonus. Then it would be specifically looking at the... Um, oh, sorry. Top priority would be the size of the piece. Sorry. Then secondary would be the member bonus. And then tertiary would be the legion power, right? Because then you can still get some more coins. Yeah. If it's like two blocks that don't give you anything, then, well, pick the one that has a little bit more power. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's the priority. Now that's how that's connected, I guess, to like the link skills and the hyperstats. Because, yeah, we can go all the way in depth into the hyperstats as well. But, um, you know, I've got a video on that. And you're basically swapping out uh, EXP and normal monster damage for IED and boss damage between mobbing and bossing setup, right? Yeah. You don't have any fluctuating crit rate. No, that's, only, that's like only a Buccaneer and maybe a few other classes who have that. But I think with the more solid link skill setup, like the split between mobbing and bossing, and then with the more solid Legion grid setup, you'll already see your damage go up quite a bit. So that's good uh, okay. That's good foundation. And we're not touching your hyperstat. Yeah, okay. Now we can get into the equips. Do you feel like with when it comes to like damage and <laughs> you, you feel like you have a bit better grasp on like where damage comes from and how you can you know kind of like yeah, feel like sure. is, is something going to be an upgrade or not like is it going to help yeah, yeah, yeah uh i mean like before i was just like looking at the number like the damage range mm -hmm. which is like dumb but I was, like, yeah oh, but it's all you have bigger. the game yeah, the yeah. game even puts it in there twice and like a double box like look at me i'm so important but then it's yeah 
it's like the visual ied it's a visual damage range but did you know your damage range actually takes into account damage to um it takes into account damage to normal monsters oh i did not know so that. that's basically your normal monster damage range kind of but oh, like okay. when you're so when you're and this is why when you this actually and this is a nice segue to go into your like your wse this is why when you roll and it also includes a damage percentage so when you roll damage percent it actually makes your damage range go up more than if you roll an attack line for that reason because wow. when you're bossing you have a whole clump of boss damage that will come on and that will kind of dilute the value because you get the reduced efficiency right on those damage percent lines because of the additive nature of the giant clump of damage whereas for attack because there's way less of it you get way less reduction there but the damage range shows you without the boss damage so comparatively damage percent looks way better on a on an item in terms of how much range it gives you but it actually gives you less when you're bossing so it's just okay. very yeah it's, yeah well it's not okay actually it's really bad i mean so, yeah not yeah. okay but what i want in the yeah you get it yeah, yeah what i want in the stat window um and you'll probably agree with me at this point is basically saying like one attack equals this much stat equals this much damage equals this much percentage attack equals you know this much ied percent you know so that you just have like a comparison of like this equals this much for you in your situation so you can just see like oh i've had nine of this or nine of that this is obviously more so i want this right it'll yeah. make it so much more intuitive for for newer people or people who aren't such incredible nerds to kind of like figure out like what do i want here right um so to segue into this you asked before and it was a legitimate question and yes um i can't tell you exactly like off the cuff right how, how much better in line of attack would be than line of all stat and damage combined but i can like tell you with pretty high confidence that it will be better yeah also because you're Attack multiplier is really good because uh, your base attack is always lower on the weapon as a claw user as well. So percentage okay. attack is just, yeah, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the ID that you need, right? So we don't we can exclude that. That doesn't mean that we don't take ID because it can still increase our damage. Um, and to an extent, if we do get ID and attack, for example, combination, attack and two, uh, like two lines attack and a line of IED, that's three useful lines. And that can also mean that now we can move a bunch of IED in our Legion grid over to boss damage instead. So okay. then the ID is still working for you, right? Because if you get it, so basically the reason why we could look at the other things first is because they're more flexible, right? They can like mold around what you get in your potentials. Because if you roll a really nice potential, you don't want to just like throw that away because every single cube you have to kind of completely reset your odds of getting something good. So if you roll something that's pretty decent, then you want to be flexible and hopefully because of, you know, all of the nerd shit and all of the number crunching that we did, it'll make you feel more confident about like depending on what you get as a roll for your potential, you'll be able to adjust your hyper stats, maybe your link skills, maybe your legion grid to fit around what potential you get, which is more rigid and more expensive, right? It's not no joke to just redo that. And that'll help you bring your whole account forward in terms of damage output. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah, both for mobbing and for bossing, you probably just want two lines, uh, two line of attack emblem, some ID there is not the end of the world and we can move around that. We can get more boss damage for the Legion grid. And for the secondary, usually I look for like a combination of boss damage uh, attack because that's just much easier to hit than, than two line attack but if you had two line attack that'd be great as well um, and because the, the other thing is like intuitively because I told you like damage and boss damage gets thrown on the same pile so if you see 9% damage that's not bad but when you're bossing that's like one third to a quarter of a boss damage line oh wow okay so it looks like a line but it's kind of like when you're bossing it's a third to a quarter of a line so now suddenly, like when you're bossing with this thing, it's not even one and a half line. It's like under that, right? Yeah. So you're losing out on that legendary potential quite a bit. If it was 30% boss or 40% boss, it'd be doing way more for you when you're when you're fighting bosses. But less when you're mobbing. So you want to keep that keep that balance. Um, but yeah, weapon can go to 17. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. So if you you know if you're very risk aversive, you could wait until we see the next batch or until the community stream, right? If they say anything about a next 30% off or a 5, 10, 15, if that's soonish, then I would just wait until that. If that's not soon, then I would just tap it up to 17. 
it's just like easy easy money it's, it's free real estate as i say yeah. um the other thing is the flame uh so if you look at the progression grid you can kind of see like what kind of flames i usually aim for um not trying to make any like uh too much of a assumptions but usually flames are not as intuitive for new people so i don't know where you stand on understanding of flames and everything yeah um i've been going through the calculator a little bit i mm -hmm. haven't been like putting a lot of flames on my items mm -hmm. just because uh i don't know if you boom an item and you transfer like that boom does it keep the flame or no it's yeah trace keeps everything yeah so the okay. star force will go down to 12 uh which is weird but that's a remnant from when it could things could boom starting at 13. um right now since things can only boom starting at 16 it's kind of weird that it goes down to 12 i feel like they should go down to 15 but you know that's a whole other <laughs> that's a whole other conversation i guess um yeah. but yeah it goes down to 12 but it saves all the other stuff including like your weapon soul all of that yeah so it'd be worth to like because i was holding off getting better flames on like my craw gear because i was mm -hmm. just like oh i'm gonna 21 this next star force event yeah yeah but yeah, it keeps, yeah. So if you have leftover flames, basically, so it is basically what I do. Like, so one thing is like understanding how good a flame is with the flame score and everything, right? Do you feel like you've got a handle on that? Uh, Yeah, I've been using that a little mm -hmm. bit. And understanding difference between flame advantage, flame disadvantage. You feel like you're good with that? Um, Like, I, I know uh, the uh, Gullix gear is not advantage mm -hmm. and the, um, the Sweetwater it yeah, that's essentially what it comes down to, yeah. And everything else pretty much has advantage. And then once you kind of have an eye for, like, what does a flame sword look like, you can very easily tell, like, okay, this is garbage. <laughs> like, because it's just so much worse, right? It only gets one yeah. line sometimes. It gets, like, two jump, and you're like, okay, this is clearly not a flame advantage item. Yeah, yeah so, um, so that's one part. The other part is, like, knowing... Uh, and now it comes to the calculator, not just the part of, like, how good is the flame, but, like, how expensive would it be to roll the same flame or roll something better? Right, that's the second part of it. So what I made is kind of like a uh, like a, um, an aim, kind of like a guiding number on like if you're around this flame score, then you're good. And then it would, then I would look at other items around the same stage of the game, around with lower flame scores, and then prioritize flaming those instead, just to like slowly one at a time bring them up into the desired amount, roughly. Okay. So if you take your numbers that you have compare them to this then you'll have a kind of a guide when it comes to the flaming on what to prioritize but so the weapon i mentioned first because you can get like stacks of attack uh percentage of the base right so this is why i work with the tiers here so if you use the calculator you're familiar with that rather than just the numbers for the other ones we use the numbers because we don't want to have to deal with all of the tiers and all of the matches we just want to throw it all in one pile so we can compare apples to apples and <laughs> not have like a yeah, nerd off every single time. Is this a tier six, a double tier five? Like, fuck all that. We just want to get yeah. to the, yeah, brass tacks. But for the weapon, um, since you're using a claw, uh, you're an arcane now, so you kind of past that point. But, you know, for the people who aren't as far yet, um, since the claw has very low base attack, the tiers of the attack aren't as important as for everyone else. Because since it's a percentage of the base, it'll just be a, a lower actual number, right? Like if you're a if a staff versus a claw, like the same tier is like a huge difference. I think on on Genesis is like more than double or something, right? So it, it gets really wild. Um, so a combination of the plus is also something to look at, right? So for plus, you're looking at damage, damage percent damage and percentage all stat. I believe you have a percentage all stat, right? Uh yeah. 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 So I haven't, uh, yeah, that can sweeten the deal a bit. Yet. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I, I would, if you have flames, any powerful, any eternal, I would just keep throwing them on this. Once you get like a tier six attack, um, at least maybe you can like you know save up more flames uh, before you roll over it. But I would be at least looking for like a tier six and just slamming everything on there until you hit that one. Okay. And then you know, if there's a bunch of other stuff that you have that can get way better flames, like because like your CRE gear, right? I saw that the flames could definitely use some help, but it totally makes sense now what your logic was behind that. Um, because you're getting at the point now where all the little bits start working together strong, like more and more, right? And then like a little bit of flame here, a little bit of percentage stat there, better potential here, better star force here. And then suddenly there's like another thousand stat you just pull out of your ass. And before you know it, there's like, oh, now we were at 30k, now we're at 35k, now we're at 40k. And then you start adding sacred, uh, yeah, stat on top of that. I don't know how much I get from that, but 
it's just like a slow slow process but then after a while suddenly my sacred yeah it's like 6.7k stat as well which that the 6.7k isn't like crazy but you've put that on top of already having 55 and now you're at like 62 63 and now you're like okay this is <laughs> now it's getting pretty serious right yeah so it's a little bit of a little bit of all of that yeah so wsc i would say weapon flame um secondary attack boss combo or double attack emblem double attack but consider ied because then you can switch over the legion grid and then basically you get a, a chunk of boss damage essentially out of it even though it cannot roll boss damage right but through the transfer and transferal property or whatever of your legion grid you can basically get a boss damage line out of that the other thing right after that that's usually very important to mention is your glove because it can get critical damage and if you go back to the boring um, <laughs> lecture about critical damage and how all of that affects your damage since it is a kind of a source of final damage uh, essentially, depending on how much critical damage you have, one line of 8% critical damage is worth, depending on the character and depending on how much you have, anywhere from like 20 to up, all the way up to 40% stat equivalent. Okay. So, depending on how long it, you think it's going to take to get into Arcane and switch to an Arcane Glove, would consider rolling just for a line of critical damage and even nothing else, and that'll make your damage go up as well. Make your range go down, make your stat go down, but it'll make your damage go up. Yeah, cause um, I was, I only have two stones for that. I was gonna get the um, gloves next, mm -hmm. but it's still like, even if you're getting like three a week, it's like four weeks. So yeah, exactly. So, so and you can enjoy that critical damage, extra mobbing, extra bossing damage in the meantime, and it's pretty cheap. It's pretty easy to roll. Oh, okay. So I've just used uh, just regular glowing cubes, and the first critical damage you you hit, you take that. Usually for um. Once you get into arcane gloves, it's also the first glove where you try to like use bright cubes and then try to go for double critical damage uh, on it. It's a bit more expensive. Uh, oh, off the top of my head, I think it's something like eight bill or something, but it's worth it because you know now you essentially have somewhere between like forty-ish to all the way up to eighty percent stat equivalent, right? So it's just gonna make your damage go way up. But again, yeah, damage range goes down and stat goes down, so it, it it's very counterintuitive. You just have to know how it works. Yeah. Um. Yes. Uh, other than that, the arcane flames. Uh, sorry, the arcane flames. The absolute flames in general could be a little better here and there. But like I said before, right? You can just kind of throw it into the pile. Look at the calculations. Look how far you are away from the progression, and slowly bring them up. Prioritize the CRA, of course, because it'll stay through when you s the switch to arcane. But if the CRA is kind of at the point where okay, now I would have to throw an average like 60 flames on here to get something better. Then it might make more sense to just get like 20 or 30 flame score on your shoes extra, for example, uh, for the mean remainder that you have them. And then, because you're getting it to the point where flames could like ruin your stats more than they could improve them. Um, or you could choose at that point to throw them onto your bossing mules, right? And get some free stat there. Get all the accessories yeah. to like 30 to 40 instead of just like 5 or 10 on it, right? Uh, get the CRA there to a decent amount, get the Absolute there to a decent amount, because for them there, it's permanent gear, right? So now that I think about it, that's probably a better option, right? Because the Abzo is on its way out. Yeah. Potential is good enough otherwise. Uh, Two-line, Legendary, 17 star, that's that's all perfect. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, CRA, so we're going to be working on the, on the Flames potential. Don't do anything to that. You're purely looking for events to, to tap uh, the Star Force. I usually just go one star at a time because it's items that trace and the trace save everything. So it makes more sense to just go 18 on everything first, then 19 on everything first. That way you can avoid a situation where you spend a whole bunch of money and you can't, let's say you can't hit 21. Some people get it in first try. Some people boom 40 times and don't see 20, right? You want to reduce the chance that you spend all your money and see no gains. So if you go one star at a time, even if you end up getting unlucky on one character and, uh, on one item and it can't go past 19, if you end up with like, 17, 18, 18 versus another person who said has the same money spent, but different strategy, and they end up with 17, 17, 17. You still made two stars more gain, right? You want to get those guaranteed stars, those cheaper stars, those cheaper gains. You want to get those locked in until you go for the riskier ones. Okay, yeah, because on my Kana, I would just like funnel my money onto one, mm -hmm. one item and just yellow it. Yeah, if you have enough, then you can kind of do that, right? If you look at the calculator and like it's on average 8 bill and you have 50, then yeah, fuck it. Just go one item at a time. But yeah. once you start going lower and lower in the money, so make sure that you have 
maybe written down somewhere or you have in your head like how much it's gonna roughly cost once you get closer and closer to like maybe i don't have the replacement cost for this piece anymore at this point you start reevaluating, like because the risk now goes up even though it's like the same odds but because you might not have the same money or the same backups the risk for the upgrade will go up right uh, so you want to make sure that you don't zero out <laughs> in terms of backups or uh, in terms of money and then end up with a downgrade because that's just very demotivating yeah uh, but yeah, other than that, CRA is usually the priority for tapping past 17, right? Up to 19, probably even up to 21, and also up to 22, respective compared to the other pieces because of the amount of backups. The only other thing that usually comes close is like a kind of treasuring, or if you go Sweetwater accessories and get a lot of Dineros, or very close, usually the belt, right? Because you can get a lot of reinforced belts or ping bean belts and then transfer into Superior. But remember, because that's not something you trace, typically because it's harder to get backups that's usually we do a big transfer so essentially it's you go from 17 superior to like a 21 fodder piece and star force into 20 and then uh from that point you decide like do you want to tap to 21 or not and so one deciding factor could be how many superiors do you have the other one is how much uh, how good is the potential already on it uh and the third one is like does it boom or not <laughs> if you if you do go for it um, yeah. So there, there's two options there. If you have an existing, because look at your existing pieces. Yeah, so you probably get these two to 17 by then anyway, right? Um, yeah, well, yeah, 40 something. Boom. Mm. I have uh, 47 now. Yeah, so that could be a situation where you're like, you get pretty lucky with the CRA and you can actually get it all the way up to 21. And then the maybe like a 19 kind of treasure. And then the next jump is like 21 fodder into 20, like is the next jump immediately. If this is your CRA, you can immediately say like, I'm just going to get 21 reinforced, boom, 20 superior. Um, in terms of your Golux earring, which has a little bit more investment in it, I would do the same thing for the Golux earring most likely and just roll over this potential. But say that you have... By the next time it comes around, you have a 17 star um, superior. Uh, what's your ring at? Oh, it's also only 10. Yeah. But let's say this ring was 17 with this potential. Now you have two options, right? You could do kind of treasure. So the first kind of treasuring you get to 21, you use as a kind of treasuring that's 21. Because every time you transfer, you lose a star. And by losing a star, you always lose more damage than if you keep. Right? So the first 21, you keep. Second to 21, you can transfer into the superior goes down to 20 um but yeah okay ring and pendant is a little bit different when it comes to the e-ring and the belt you have the extra option of transferring into a clean one if you have a backup one or into your existing one okay does that do you kind of see why you would want to do one over the other the, um well the, the superior like the 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 ring is harder to get because mm -hmm. it takes a month to get one ring so exactly yeah that's why the pendant and the ring are in a kind of a different scenario than the than the earring and the belt because you would have backups right so yeah. um the reason you would want to transfer into another instead of the existing one so for you it'll pretty much always just be in these because you're losing no value here like 10 star and epic potential like at this stage of the game is like nothing right uh but if you already had like kind of like the same superior as you had abzo right like 17 star two line legendary um then you could say okay i have one backup so i could transfer here guaranteed roll over my potential um and then potentially tap from 20 to 21 if it doesn't work i have my backup so i can and then i have to get back to 17 to what i already had in the first place so and i have to spend for that money again and i lost that initial potential if it does go, then I have to redo my potential. So both situations have a downside and only one has an upside. But if you transfer into a new one, then, uh, and it goes, well now, yeah, okay, you lost the potential and existing of the existing one and you have to redo the potential, but that's only when you succeed. If it doesn't go, you just go back to your previous belt and then you don't have to re-get your potential. So there's no downside there. Yeah. So you're kind of looking in your head like, what are the possible scenarios? What if it works? What if it doesn't work? And then, you know, either visually or whatever, <laughs> whatever you need to do, kind of look like what would be, what are the possible outcomes? What makes sense to do here? And again, having more backups just gives you more options there, more scenarios that you can 
realistically take into consideration. If you don't have any, then, well, what you see is what you get, right? And that's why I'm a big advocate for like sitting on like a 20 star superior Golux ring or a 20 star slime ring. Because if you can only get one, you don't know when the next one is coming. Guar 20 star, a lot of people see that as 21 minus one or as 22 minus two. I see it as 17 plus three. And it's really just a glass half empty, half full kind of <laughs> kind of vibe looking at it. Yeah, because everyone wants to like finish the equipment. Yeah. It's like the amount of money it takes is just so much. Yeah, for some people it might make sense to do that, but for a lot of people it doesn't. So it, it comes more to understanding your situation, uh, your weekly income, how long does it take to get backups, and do you need the damage to do anything extra, right? Because, yeah, you can know you have 22, but that's just you knowing. And is it going to really make a huge difference on one boss, whether you have like a 22-star piece or a 21? Answer yeah. no. That was... <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I would say just aim for like 20s and 21s, and that can just get you into Black Mage and get you into, you know, into destroying all of Grandis when that stuff comes out, and especially with like 6 Mage, uh, 6 Mage, 6 Job, uh, like Power Creep stuff coming in. Um, you're going to be able to do a lot, and a lot of it is going to come down to practice and, you know, hands, as people say, right? Like just the hand stat. That's where a lot of the stuff will come in. And 22s will come, if you keep playing, 22s will come eventually. Like my goal was never to 22, but now I have two characters full 22 just because eventually you can make so much money, you get so many backups, it, then it just makes sense to do it. But just don't do it too early. Um, or, I mean, or do, you know, like I'm not your dad, but like I'm just saying that like you might you might be foregoing a lot of guaranteed gains for like a small chance of a gain that will feel really good in the moment, but then how much is really functionally movie forward you know yeah that makes sense yeah and that's where the calculators will help you like you know how, how expensive is this comparative to getting this other upgrade done and yeah yeah so i mean definitely like some 17 so you could say if you get really lucky with the cra you get it to 21 and you still have a decent amount of money left you could also just try to tap like a like a reinforced and see if you could just make a 21 if you can just equip it. If it costs too much money or you boom a bunch of them and you're like, okay, this is just depressing as fuck, then just get a superior to 17 and get like unique potential on it. Kind of like similar like the 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 superior uh, earrings and that's fine, you know? Mm -hmm. Dominator can go up. The superior uh, pendant go up. You only have one Dominator, right? Yeah, just keep saving those because... <laughs> yeah, I have one spare. It takes I forever. never get them. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, that goes into the other things, because this, again, like, you could do this earlier or wait until the Starforce event. Based on whether you're waiting or not, I think it's a good idea to really evaluate the and, and circle back to the drop in the Mesogear. Because, yeah, get stuff to 17 is just really easy to say and really easy to do as well. But um, having the sets of drop in Mezzo and especially looking forward as well to maybe more drop in the future uh, is a good idea to do, because that's where... Because uh, you're at the situation now, you're feeling it, that you're getting the money and you're kind of like ready whenever an event will come, but you don't have the backups now. And why is that coming? Probably because your drop rate is lacking. One, because you know you got unlucky and you didn't get a large drop yet. But second, because you don't have that full drop rate gear yet. Yeah. So that's where the balance is off a little bit. Um, so in terms of full drop and mezzo, what do you have now? Uh, I have... Is it two mezzo? Three mezzo, three drop? Four mezzo, three drop? Uh, no, I have I have full meso. Full meso, okay. So you have the. So I have five meso with inner, and then I have inner ability, and then I have. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, here's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tattoo. Yeah. yeah. I think I have four drop. Wait, no. I find. Uh, I see four meso. Wait, am I missing one? Two rings, a face, and an earring meso. Do you have another one? Oh yeah, I have a, I have an eye accessory. Is it not on there? Uh, I see the sweetwater monocle. Oh, maybe like an old. Uh, yeah, it's aquatic. Just a sack of yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, you want to give yeah. things another life, right? Because especially if it's already unique, you just steer it up. Boom. Make that investment worth something. Because we don't have trade, so you want to do something with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, and same thing. Well, I yeah, it was like ten bill to roll like double line it drop so oh i think it's i, don't know if that's I think accurate, it's but... uh with 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 bright cubes i believe it's 18 if i'm not mistaken oh wow yeah 
if you're specifically looking for just that, right? Uh, of course, if you're looking for either I would either double okay. mezzo or double drop or drop a mezzo combination, then the cost goes down a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I also don't want to yeah. get it on like a. Uh... Like something that I'll have to get rid of later because I'm not doing enough damage, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, ideally the drop rate can be... Oh, it's going to shift a bit, but like drop rate can be on relatively weak pieces because you're usually doing it when you're doing weekly bosses that you nuke anyway or when you're defeating a boss at the end of a box at the end of a boss, right? So you don't need damage there. The Mezzo Obtain is better if it's on pieces that are slightly stronger because it's usually when you're mobbing and you don't want to lose too much damage when you're mobbing. Yeah. It's kind of how you want to want to look at it. But as always, just like your weapon secondary and emblem is kind of like one blob of potential and you want it to fit the IED and the damage and the attack that you need for your character, in the same way you want to look at all of your accessories also as like one blob of drop and Mezzo with as much stat with on there as you can so something like the earring you're just never going to re-roll because it's mezzo it could be drop there could be options there but it also has two line luck so you just you're just not touching that right like that's just fine yeah. where it is um the ring could be very easily like the silver blossom ring could be very easily re-rolled if 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 needed because this is really easy to get back right Re really really cheap um that's how you want to look at these pieces. Because say that you roll too much mezzo, suddenly you have like six lines of mezzo. Okay, what has mezzo and doesn't have luck? Reroll that, right? And that's how you get to a combination set where everything has mezzo or drop that you need and probably one line of luck. And here and there, things will pop up like double mezzo or double drop or drop mezzo combination. And then you basically build the entire set around if you have anything double. Otherwise, you just go for, for one of all, right? So we were looking at the... Um, Possibly extra kind of treasure and possible, well, or the uh, treasure hunter John ring, right? Is your fourth one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, oh, wait, okay, visual. Um, you have eye face, earring, and two rings for mezzo. And then for drop, you have one ring and the two pendants. Yeah, I could get another ring. I'd, yeah. I'd need to get that treasure drawn ring. Mm -hmm. So there's at least, at least that. And then you also want to look for more drop past that. I want to kind of look at the pieces that you have that could maybe fulfill that role. Um, yeah, because you have this kind of treasure ring now. So you kind of want to make an extra kind of treasure, uh, not for drop and not for mezzo, but for damage, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially when you have backups, like, and if you're thinking about like 21ing CRA, then you also want to be thinking about like 19ing a kind of treasure, because then relative to that, it's not as much risk and it's pretty doable and it's decent gains. And if you can switch in as a third ring, if you can go from 10 star superior, 15 star reinforced, and two mezzo rings, you can go to like two 17 star rings and 19 star ring, and maybe one that's like a little bit middle. That's a good upgrade for that whole blob of stat. Yeah, that I'm I'm working on extra kind of treasures. I have three extras. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's so cool. if I made another specifically for bossing, then I'd mm -hmm. have two, and I'd just be working on getting more of those. Yeah, and you'd either want to um, get get another mezzering if you can to free up the Tenebris ring, because that of course that has very really good base stats. That's essentially like a 17 star ring there. That could be damage ring. Or you want to look into I don't know how you're doing about crafting meisters. Do you have any materials for that? <coughs> I don't think I have any materials for that yet. Mm, okay. Are you actively saving for those though? You need primals from arc, so normal arc daily with with drop rate if you can, right? Because one dominators and primals. Yeah, yeah. I just right. have to like actually not be lazy and start doing that. Pretty much. Is yeah, th it's just power in numbers there. Like your drop rate is individual drop rate is ass, but it's about being able to do it every day and give and having you know three hundred sixty five chances a uh, a year to be able to get those, because. Yeah. When it comes to counter treasures, uh, counter treasure rings, well, I swallowed half the letters there, and dominators, like it's, they're really good for themselves. They're really good to transfer hammer uh, as fodder into the 150, but then they're both also needed to double fodder, so into superior that goes into slime and into superior that goes into source later. So you can never have too many of those. Yeah. So it's one of those kind of mandatory things. And my mom was in a very similar situation where she had like a lot of money. And then no backups because she doesn't boss. And it's like, 
yeah, I, all I can really tell you is like just, yeah, cube and then buy a whole bunch of flames, I guess. But the, you lose so much efficiency if you don't have the backups for star forcing. So it's just because that's where all the gains are. Just so much attack and stat. Yeah. So you kind of, yeah, you kind of have to. <laughs> I'll take it you enjoy bossing and you're you're gonna you're gonna notice some definitely some damage increase. You get like a little bit better pot on the emblem and the and the secondary and move those stats around like we said. I think you're already gonna feel that your character is capable of quite a bit. You throw in some seventeens, all of that extra weapon attack is gonna scale very nicely with the extra percentage attack that you're gonna you get from your WSE. And then um and with yeah, the extra flat attack and then the extra stat with uh Hopefully some extra stat percentage. Yeah, but you really want to work towards like full drop, re full drop meso set. That's probably, it's probably just yeah the cubing first. You know, like a little bit on the emblem, a little bit on secondary, a little bit on the glove, and then get the full drop meso combination set and look at some pieces on like how can I maybe get a little bit more drop rate. But some pieces are gonna drop off from your current damage set and are gonna become drop and meso pieces again later, and then they can just you know pick up that function and become extra drop rate pieces, or they become extra meso pieces and your current meso pieces become drop rate pieces, right? That's very easy to, to switch between. So you want to stay flexible there. Okay. Just don't end up with like, you know, like 30 legendary accessories in your inventory. Like you're not a little bit on the lower side now, but some people are like, oh, this can be useful and this can be useful. And then they have like 14 legendary rings and it's like, okay, I went a little bit overboard yeah, <laughs> because there's no situation where you need like all of these ever. So yeah. That's a little bit much. Yeah. Okay, we got that panda. Yeah. Yeah, the one thing you want to keep in mind, if you're going to do the training, um, is that you probably want to wear a spirit pen most of the time. So you want to make sure that you can build your set around that a little bit, right? You already have the two pendants, so it basically just want to be one line of drop rate less. But the further you go, and yeah, especially once six job comes out, uh, it's still pretty far, but you want to you want to look for being able to have a lot of drop rate when you're training because you're going to need to farm basically for what's the equivalent six job equivalent of our node stones i don't know if you've looked into that at all uh, yeah I, I actually watched your video like going through a whole all that oh yeah okay yeah so then the drop rate will be really important probably more important than the mezzo obtained at that point especially because most of your mezzo is probably going to come from your weekly bossing income anyway Unless you have a great mezzo and drop rate set, probably you'll need a bunch of hybrid pieces there, right? Like a drop and mezzo on the same piece and then probably no stat, but then your damage is gonna have to come from other stuff like really solid WSE, but your arcane gear is gonna take up a lot of damage there that's needed, right? So that more hybrid gear that you're wearing in both mobbing and bossing is gonna become way more powerful than what you have there now. So there's gonna be 21 or 22 star CRA there, you know, 19 star arcane stuff. Like that's gonna, yeah, it's just, you're basically all just wearing mini weapons on your body, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. It's like one of those old, uh, one of those over-the-top drawn armors that just so many spikes on it that you can't even. How, like, how do you That's even wear it? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, how do you get in? In the, how do you get in and out of this without like slicing open your hands every time? Yeah. yeah. Basically that. Um. Yes. Okay. Um. All right. Questions. Um, one question I had is the, um, the Commercy. Yeah. Transposing. Yeah. So, is that, like, very good? Like, should I still be doing that? Because I heard that that got, like, a tiny nerf. Yeah. Got a bit of a nerf. It is still really good. The thing, the problem in this game is that we talked about it already. It's, like, the RNG on the drops, right? You, you're looking at, like, Twilight Marks is, like... Uh, that's like decent once you're doing the hard runs because uh, you don't need that many. The slime rings is already going to kind of uh, because you're going to basically have to do chaos to get those and then pitched. Um, the only steps between what you have now and pitched is basically transposed uh, stuff. And the beauty about it is just that it is as, as long as you do enough runs, it's, it's quote unquote guaranteed, right? You can get enough backups and you can get there. And with pitch, it's just there's a chance that you get one like you know in two weeks and that it actually goes but there's a chance that it takes you two or three years and you only see two of them and they don't go you know so yeah whenever you have a system like in Golux, for example and as much as 
you know, that system is annoying, it's also really, really fucking good. That's why we all use it, right? If it was really that annoying and it wasn't that good, we wouldn't be using it. But it's really potent in the damage that comes from it. If you have any kind of system where you have... Um, I've really just been filling time because I'm trying to think of the word. What's the word when you have, like, you can get backups because you have a system that allows you to buy them with, like, a, a pity system, right? Oh, like yeah, pitched yeah. has no pity system if there was a thing where all the pitch bosses drop like if all of them drop like one coin and then with 20 coins you could buy a pitched then you wouldn't then i wouldn't say don't transpose you know it's a bit too much too much of a side path um this is taking you too far away from like the main <laughs> the main road um but there isn't right so there's the, the variance is too wide and you can narrow that variance with a pity system like sunk mercy you can you can save up for backups and if you're gonna if you're gonna go down that road, then definitely build out the boat first. So do all the furthest voyages, level up your boat, get you to dreadnought. It's a big investment. But once you have the dreadnought, you get more energy and you can make way more dinaros. You can make like fifty dinaros a day, so you can get like a, a pendant backup every week. And oh. then uh, then you're just gonna be swimming in dinaros. And then you can very easily yeah, the transpose won't be as great because it doesn't have the flame. But a twenty one star transposed uh, sweetwater piece is gonna be in some like. With the old transpose, it was actually better than pitch. Like a 22 star transpose sweet water would actually be by itself better than a pitch. The only reason the pitch got better is because of the augments from the extreme bosses. Good luck with that. Uh, and the set bonuses, which also good luck with that because you need so many pieces, right? Yeah. So it's just a more reliable way of, 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 of getting there. But not to okay, the. That makes sense. Yeah, not all the way through the top, but, but very close to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 48 denaros. Yeah, close to 50. Okay, uh, anything else we mentioned or something that's not totally clear? Uh, no, I think I think that's good. Yeah, well, I'm here now, so <laughs> let's get the thinking to knowing. Any, you can scroll through, like, pictures, anything. Yeah. Um... You got links in Legion, went through the, the stuff. Yeah, maybe upcoming updates. I mean, again, we have a training event most likely coming up, right? So it's probably some grinding in your future. Okay, closer to 260. Yeah, I'm trying to get there before the... Uh, obviously before um, 6 star, but yeah. I wanted to get there for the... Um, the selectors for Sacred Symbols. Right, right, yeah. For the next one, but I don't think... I'm still six levels out. Yeah. And I'm not, like, whapping six times a day, so... <laughs> You're not? Oh, I'm disappointed. Man. No, <laughs> sadly. But um, I've done like two in the past yeah. month, so yeah, no, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll probably miss that, which kind of sucks, but mm. um, yeah, it's pretty much it. Wait, wait, you mean the chapter rewards or? Um, for the six star, the next chapter mm -hmm. they have a symbol selector pouch. Like yeah, yeah, two hundred yeah. sacred symbols. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that one. Well, you can you can keep that one like closed for a while, right? All the way until the end of the event. That's true. Yeah, I'll have to see how much progress I'm making because mm -hmm. I I don't know how much XP I'll be gaining yeah. once I hit two fifty five. Yeah. The difference because it's because it's two hundred, so that is well two hundred now is also a lot better than when the event comes out because when the event comes out they're gonna like level squish it a bit, right? And they're gonna give more symbols per area as well. So someone okay. You get like 20 from the first two areas per day, and then 10 from every area per day after that. So compared to now, it's like 10 and five and 10 and five. So you're getting 30, so 200 is like a whole week of symbols. But if you're comparing it to 20, 20, 10, 10, well now, you know, now it's five, five days worth or 60. So now it's like three days worth, right? So the relative value will go down a bit as well. Yeah. yeah. Just so you don't have to feel as bad if you miss it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then even then, like, I'm I'm getting pretty close to getting uh, my arcane symbols, like getting some mm -hmm. of those max. So yeah, I saw that. will definitely help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good progress. And weeklies are so free now, right? So you're just, like, slamming 45 symbols in there. Oh, yeah. It's, it's so nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember maxing, like, my first five characters, I think, I maxed was, like, on just eight symbols a day from Finishing Journey. That was it. Oh, my God. Like, there was no... <laughs> There was no second daily. There was no reverse city bonus. Like, <laughs> thinking back on that, I was like, how? <laughs> how did I do that? Yeah. And now it's like hundreds of weeks. Yeah, such a difference. 
Wait, I saw your symbols. Where am I? Oh, here. Yeah. Okay. I'm scrolling past them like four times. Yeah. That's that's really good progress. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I pretty much for every single I made this character when the uh, 250 burn came out. Mm -hmm. I didn't make this my 250 burn, but um, mm -hmm. I just used all the events to like get all the symbols. So. Yeah. Oh wait, you're talking about like in Savior, right? Not in Destiny. Yeah. 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 Because Destiny had a, a 250 burn as well. It was like the first uh, hyper burn. Oh yeah, I, I probably wasn't playing for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, uh, yep. Well, next yeah. one, two sixty burn. Oh, I guess that's the last question. Like, have you given that some thought? Who would you would consider two sixty burning? Um, I not really. I'll have to look. I probably something very low effort. Like, I'll probably make a dawn warrior or something and just like mm -hmm. roll my face. But, um, I don't know. I've been playing this game more recently for like to play longevity because I used to burn myself out a lot. Mm -hmm. Like when I was playing my Kana, I would just be farming all day and then I was just like, all right, I'm just not gonna play for six months. But then you make a lot of progress in that short period of time and then you're gone for six months. So it's like, but I think the new event, uh, like the new daily XP is gonna be good for that too. Yeah, yeah. If you're basically if you're grinding a lot now, it's gonna feel worse. But if you're not grinding that much, it's gonna feel better, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. I don't want to keep you too long. We're already like quite long session. So. Uh, but yeah, a lot of information. So like rehash it. Uh, I'll upload it to YouTube so you can rewatch as well. Listen to your own voice. That's always fun for most people. <laughs> um. But yeah, if you have any other uh questions you know where to find me so uh but i wish you good luck and the many gains yeah, and not too many booms <laughs> yeah, and, yeah uh, thank you uh thank you for doing this yeah no worries so yeah have a good one and i'll see you around thank you have a good one all right bye, -bye. all right cool nice another wop finished if you were training good job look at those gains what how much percent did you make good stuff uh so yeah the last time some might be off a little bit because I had to guess because I reset the playlist. Uh, not 100% sure. But uh, I think we're around the two hour mark now. Uh, so yeah, if you're in a similar situation, hopefully uh, this coaching session was informative for you as well. If you think some of it made sense, some of it didn't, and you're still looking for more personal one-on-one -on -one help, check the description of the video or use exclamation mark coaching over in the Twitch chat. Which is where I do most of my stuff or do most of my content. That's why most of the YouTube stuff is not very edited. Because it's just a clip from my Twitch streams where I live stream uh, all day, every day. So if you want to join that, Scarter on Twitch. You can find me there. And that's why I also have all of these resources, all of these uh, spreadsheets and all of this nerd stuff. And all of this, these things that other people made. Shout out to Xenogent of Bera. Will, well, if it isn't Mo Howard at gmail.com if you want to donated this guy i've actually donated everyone who made these resources except for this thing i should send him some money too um yeah so you know things that didn't make sense let me know leave a comment uh additional questions you have either use the commands you can use them oh they're available for everyone by the way through the chat just exclamation mark and then whatever topic and then it'll just pop right up unless the bot is on the fritz then you know <laughs> maybe just bookmark exclamation mark commands that has all of them so that's like 200 and that's the that's the nudes command that you just picked up i almost clicked that one uh that's like 230 yeah almost 230 commands with information some of those are you know kind of jokes so you can ignore those so they're <laughs> they're color labeled for your convenience so yeah let me know um what do you think about all this uh, or don't you know whoever uh but just watch another video click uh the playlist or whatever shows up so yeah enjoy uh the next video or catch me live on stream either way thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye oh for people who haven't clicked off the video yet special extra offer i also give away two of these sessions every month so if you leave a comment saying that you would like to win including your discord name so i can reach out to you you could potentially win and Surprise, surprise, not too many people actually leave comments like that. So you have an insanely high chance of winning the, one of these sessions that's worth uh, otherwise 35 euros. So, you know, nothing gambled, nothing nothing wagered, nothing lost, whatever. Whatever the saying is, I know the words. You know them too. Yes. But yes, that's, uh, sorry, I forgot that one. But thank you for watching and see you next one. Peace.